So welcome, welcome everyone. So uh, we are so happy uh, to have you here. We're so happy to have an in-person event. So welcome to the uh, information on the autonomous marine mammal um, detection. My name is Linda Larson. I'm the programs and partnership manager for 401 Tech Bridge. So on behalf of myself and the 401 Tech Bridge as well as Northeast Tech Bridge team, um, we'd like to like certainly like to welcome you. Um, the prize challenge itself um, for for marine mammal was a collaboration collaboration between 401 Tech Bridge and Northeast Tech Bridge, as well as our Northwest Tech Bridge um, out in Washington State. So want to give a, a shout out and, and uh, a big round of thanks um, to Ralph Duncan and Johanna Schomburg out there that, that really did a, a great deal of work, along with um, our sponsors. And, and I'm going to look at my paper. I'll apologize because I don't want to miss anyone. Um, so Maritime Blue and Quiet Sound, as well as, the, as, well as Ensign, so the National Securities Innovation network. Um, so that's really, uh, you know, a, a big piece and part of the collaboration and bringing the two coasts together. So one thing, um, this is the 401 Tech Bridge Advanced Materials and Technologies uh, Innovation Center, soon to be built out. Um, so there's some renderings and pictures around the room. Um, we also have some, uh, some renderings um, here as well. Following the event, um, we certainly hope that you stick around and, and you network and, and talk and engage with one another because we haven't been with each other for, for a long period of time. But also the team will be here to uh, provide any tours of the facility and hopefully answer any questions that you have. We are looking at hopefully maybe having some people in here um, by the end of the year, um, but really looking at construction hopefully completed um, by the beginning of, of next year. So um, so more to come and, and stay tuned for, for that. So 401 Tech Bridge um, is really an economic uh, development organization. And, and we we do a number of different things, but one of the things is our support of the Northeast Tech Bridge um, and the work that um, Steve Bordenero um, does over at the Naval Undersea uh, Warfare Center. And Lee Silvestri is our Northeast Tech Bridge coordinator who does sit on our 401 Tech Bridge team. And there's a lot of Tech Bridge, Tech Bridge, Tech Bridge. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll get the whiteboard and connect all the dots for you after that or answer any questions that you have. Um, but we do a number of things um, in, in support of, of the Tech Bridge. Bridge, and one of them happens to be prize challenges. So, um, so Steve will go into into great detail about this challenge, and you'll see some information um, from the the Washington launch with regards to the challenge itself, the use of the platform, those kinds of things. So, we have completed a hand wheel challenge um, as part of a prize challenge. We're finalizing a USV challenge currently with a solver being verified. We've got our marine mammal challenge, and we have an additional challenge that will be announced next around sediment detection. So um, please stay tuned for that. So that's just uh, the last one with sediment detection will be in collaboration with our Gulf Coast Tech Bridge. Um, so kind of going to down down to Florida there. So we certainly uh, look forward look forward to that. Um, uh, sure, you can. Alf, go right ahead. No, nope. <laughs> I know that's. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> Uh, I, it hasn't been announced yet, so I can't I can't tell you that. But as soon as it gets announced, I'll be sure that you uh, that you receive a copy of that challenge. Any other questions? So it's we you will have the opportunity um, to for Q and A um, and, and at the end, um, but you will also receive a full copy of the video from the Washington launch, including the Q and A that happened there, and a full video recording of this session because we are recording it as well cause any other uh, any other problems or disruptions. So I will certainly introduce uh, Dr. Steve Bordnaro, uh, the Northeast Tech Bridge Director, for uh, to review the actual challenge itself. Okay, so the team here was a little bit worried about me, you know, not preparing and winging it. So I, I, I have notes that I'll pretend to look at. Um, but before getting into the, the particular challenge, I, I want to just talk about this TechBridge network. Um, I won't get into gory details, but we have the Northeast TechBridge, which is a Navy entity. And then we have the 401 TechBridge, which is um, under UI Research Foundation, which we have a partnership intermediary agreement with, um, which allows them to work with small industry because we know it's hard to work with the Navy. The way we try to do this relationship is you have 
Navy people and you have industry people. We both have certain rules we have to follow, but the union of the two, we hope we could be a full service organization to any company reaching out. There may be a time where you guys are writing a proposal uh, and need help with that. Well, you can talk to the TechBridge network, you can get help, but I, I can't be in the room because I'm a government guy. There may be a time where in a meeting we're talking about a particular contract. Well, I may be, it may be only government guys in the room uh, because the, the industry can't see it. But from the outside world, we want to be a full service organization and it's seamless to you uh, whether you're dealing with the, the government guys or, or the non-government guys. Uh, so the, there's both you know, kind of virtual program we do in physical locations as part of the strategy. Uh, this just goes through uh, our programming. And we use the evolution chart because we look at, you know, the working with the tech bridges kind of starts very early and then gets to the point where you can do an OTA, another transaction. Uh, I can tell you what that is in a second. Um, and then you've kind of graduated and you, you're ready to do the, the normal contracting that you see with the Navy. And then you kind of uh, off, off my plate and, and back to the, the normal way of doing business. Uh, so just going from left to right, we do have some uh, STEM programming. Uh, Candy De uh, Dejanis over at Newark has a great st STEM program. A portion of that is being done with the 401 Tech Bridge. We have this program uh, uh, called Launch uh, that we're starting up. Uh, and that's if looking for entrepreneurs who are interested in licensing Navy patents and building a business around them. There are some programs that FedTech and Ensign has that we may be joining. Um, Accelerate, this is an exciting program because that's going on now. Um, this is, the way I describe it, you have a, um, a, a group that has a great idea. They call themselves a company, but they're not really, they don't really know how to be a company yet. So they need some mentoring, uh, they need some help to, to accelerate from from an idea to being a company. Uh, for that, we work with uh, 401 TechBridge, Ensign, and also Mass Challenge. Uh, if you haven't heard about Mass Challenge, they're, they're a great organization. Um, I think they started in Mass, but it's not a Mass organization. They are worldwide. Uh, we have a Blue Tech Acceleration Program going on uh, right now with them. Uh, so any small company uh, that needs help kind of getting off the ground in Blue Tech, that's a great program. Uh, tech scouting is something that uh, if a guy at a Navy lab says, hey, I'm looking for a certain amount of tech, I don't have the time to figure out what's out there, uh, the 401 Tech Bridge could help us find companies and deliver either um, a demonstration or proof of concept uh, to the government. We have one of those going on. Uh, uh, hopefully, I won't take too much time, but we were interested in some something that we need some wireless technology. That's something that Newick doesn't really need to do or... or uh, uh, invest in their engineers' capabilities in that area. So we were able to, to work with industry to figure out how to get that, that technology done. Uh, prize challenges, we're talking about that today. We do have an s and broad agency announcement. Uh, if you have an idea, you can submit it to that. It's a little tricky on the funding of that because you're kind of sending an idea, hoping there's funding on the, on the other side. Um, but what that can do for you is if it's a good idea and and you put it in through the BAA, you've satisfied any competition requirements uh, for us to reach back to you. And then I think everyone's aware of the SBIR and STTR program. Uh, we have really good SBIR support. We are working with the primes because we think one of the keys to successful transition of SBIRs is have the small companies understand what the primes are doing early. So uh, there's a bunch, bunch of uh, primes that have agreed to work with us. Well, we, we want them to understand what's going on as early as possible, as, as early as we could get the prime's interest, even if it's, it's phase one. Um, and there can be teaming, you know, as you all know, uh, all the primes know, you can be a sub on an SBIR. Uh, that's probably the more, most formal thing we do here. Um, but just making the connections and whether it's a conversation like, oh, you're, you're building this, that's on my system, you know, don't forget to paint it purple. Um, have those conversations early. Uh, and then uh, OTAs, uh, this is something that, that I don't get too much involved with, but it is under our portfolio of kind of non-FAR based or you know, non-old school contracting. Um, and that's for doing uh, prototyping. Uh, and we work with the consortium uh, UTIC, Undersea Technology, I don't know, Innovation Consortium, something like that, underwater technology stuff. Um, uh, so th that's the programming. And then on the next slide, 
Uh, we talk about locations. Uh, so we got this place, which is going to be the crown jewel someday. Um, and then we want to be able to, when you walk through this door, that it really doesn't have any boundaries. That if you walk in here and there's a facility need that you have, if it doesn't live in the building, you're, you're connected to it. For example, MITRE has a swimming pool uh, for testing. If you need, if you come in and you say, hey, I need to do something with graphene and I need to test it in a swimming pool, we don't want to have to have a company have to make multiple relationships. You walk in the door, Oh, you need a graphing thing? Oh, yeah, that's over in uh, room 12. Oh, you need a swimming pool? That's up the street, but it's on one you know, menu option. So make it easier to get to all the facilities uh, in, in the region, and we're working those relationships. Key one is Narragansett Bay Test Facility. Uh, that's a Newark facility. A lot of people don't know that you can use that facility as a company. You can do it in a couple ways. You could either just write a check and pay us what it costs. That's a work for private parties. Or if we're interested in the technology, you can do a CRADA, a Collaborative Research and Development Agreement, and that allows us to use those facilities. We have an example now where there's a startup, has some underwater comm stuff, and they wanted to, to test it. And we said, oh, why don't you test it with us? And they did. And the feedback was, was uh, great because they said, hey, you guys dealt with with the launching, the deployment, you gave us the buoys. All we had to focus on is our tech. And when we went into the testing, all we were worried about was the other stuff. We, we almost were forgetting about the tech. Working with guys who do it allow us to focus on what's important. And, and working with a facility that's used to testing all the time is great because if you're, if you're testing wherever, Charles River or wherever, and you're worried about losing your equipment, you're either gonna have to have it sink because no matter what technology we're doing, we still don't know how to keep water out of things. Um, so when it ends up on the bottom, you're either going to have to be scrambling, finding a diver, or you're going to have to pay a diver to be sitting there. Well, at Newark, we have divers who are engineers throughout the base and some dedicated divers that if something sinks, you say, hey, I need a diver. Yeah, you got to pay for them if you use them. And I've had a thing go, you know, buoyancy not work and we had a diver in the water uh, in under an hour uh, getting it to us so working with people who do it all the time is great so if you're interested in doing any testing with Newark uh, talk to me uh, and then the, the last thing is we realize that innovation innovative companies aren't necessarily going to come to us so we do want to have a presence uh, outside of this space uh, we have had offices at over in Providence at CIC and innovation studio and then we have a relationship with innovate Newport again innovations happening outside the Navy we want to make sure you know we're we're in the same lunchroom as them to have those conversations. Uh, as I leave that um, uh, that discussion about the facilities, there is a tie-in with what's going on in the state with the blue tech focus of the state. Uh, this concept called uh, Smart Bay, uh, and we're involved with that. And and if if the investments in the state go through, there'll be a collaboration with the Navy to improve improve things. Um, before we kick off the video, um, I just want to kind of give you a little bit of, of background of what led up to this. Uh, the, the first thing is, um, you know, I go back, I don't know, people in the area, have you ever done the outside movie uh, things on the beaches around here? Okay, a couple people. So I was at one, and it was called Sonic Sea. I'm there with my family, and it's all about whales and how they're impacted by various things, including sonar by the Navy. So my little kids are looking at me like, Dad, are you killing whales? What are you doing? It's like, I'm not killing whales. Like, when I go out on testing, and, and I was doing testing for torpedoes at the time, we have all these programs. You, we have guys up in planes. It's a great thing. We do new hires. We have them up in a plane looking for, for, um, for whales. We have spotters on ships. We have, we're listening for devices. If we hear a whale, we shut down everything. Uh, there's a whole training program. Uh, which I actually recently retook because I was going on a whale watch so I could spot all the whales. So we, we really do a lot to, um, to try to avoid harming, harming whales. Very manually intensive. We also have a lot of research. Um, there's uh, our testing range is when we're not doing testing and if they're recording any um, uh, acoustic data, we share that with researchers uh, to, to try to identify species um, and do some marine um, uh, machine learning on, uh, on identifying different species and how they're doing this, tagging programs. And we have a lot of data, both underwater and, and in air. Um, but everything we do all ties into or relies on some manual pieces. So 
if you try to relate this to the future where we have unmanned vehicles, how do we do that? Well, we said if this is a big problem, we're going to break it up into chunks. And one thing we don't have, uh, despite doing stuff in the air and doing stuff in water, we don't have a lot of data where you have a combination of two that's synchronized and labeled and understood. So we said, really, it'd be great to have a system that did that. So that's really the goal of this challenge is what do we have out there in industry to collect data, whether it's camera, LIDAR, radar, something in the air and then something under the water, get that data synchronized so we can start collecting this data for future phases. We just got to start looking at the machine learning piece, uh, et cetera. Uh, and then, you know, the, the eventual goal is to, to get this out into, uh, into unmanned, unmanned uh, vehicles. Um, so it's this holistic approach of, of acoustics and non-acoustics. Non um, let's see, make sure. Oh, and the other thing I want to mention is we do want to have this apply to a wide range of platforms. Uh, we talked about this applying to both coasts. Um, and you'll hear more about that. Orcas on the, on, uh, the left coast and right whales over here. Um, and unmanned vehicles, but also... Um, limited manning vehicles, so let's say ferry ferry ships, etc. And then we also want all sizes. It's not stated in the prize challenge of anything about size and cost. That's that's an open variable. But if you look at applicability, we're not going to put a three hundred thousand dollar system on a hundred thousand dollar USV. So a more expensive system uh, is going to just naturally. I don't think I'm giving anyone an unfair advantage. It's natural that a smaller, cheaper system has more applicability. Um, so I'll, I'll just leave it as to say, like, we are collaborating these days as a Navy with more outside sources uh, than I, I think we've ever had. Uh, so working on this prize challenge, it may, may say Navy there, but we're trying to get in front of this problem for the whole industry, whether it's offshore wind, um, you know, ferry services, et cetera. Uh, so, so look at this challenge as, as being a, a global, global need. Um, and one, one point I mentioned offshore wind, they've had a challenge as well that we looked at and looked at the results of that and said, okay, let's take it to the next step. So we're, we're all kind of doing our piece to make this happen. Uh, and if we go across industries, you know, may, maybe it'll be uh, the shipping industry that does another challenge or some, something else. So we want to do this as a whole community. Uh, so with that, I think it's a good time to uh, start the video, unless I missed anything. All right. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, for those of you that I haven't haven't met, my name is Ralph Duncan. I'm with the Northwest Tech Bridge. Uh, we'd like to welcome you to this program, this official launch of our whale challenge, the detection of autonomous detection of, of marine mammals. Um, one of the things I'd like to do before we get started and, and introduce you to our speakers is acknowledge our, our partners uh, in, in, in this challenge and uh, in getting this thing to, to this point today. Um, I'd specifically initially like to recognize uh, from the East Coast, the 401 Tech Bridge and the Navy Lab at Newport, Rhode Island as, as our partners. And specifically, I'd like to acknowledge my partner in crime and co-manager of this challenge, uh, Linda Larson. Uh, and she's played a big part in helping me get through this and uh, helping us get through this. So I'd like to recognize National Security Innovation Network and Justin Dunnicliffe, who's Chief of Staff of, of Ensign. Uh, Naval Sea System C Command, who is our, our, our main, uh, one of our main sponsors. Quiet Sound, and, and we, we're happy to have Rachel Aronson here as a speaker, for, who's director of Quiet Sound, as well as Maritime Blue, Impact Washington, who, along with Pacific Northwest Defense Coalition, has uh, made arrangements for this space for us. We appreciate that very much. Um, and so uh, we, we want, would like to thank all of our sponsors uh, for helping us get to this point, without whom we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here. I would also like to acknowledge our esteemed judges that we have lined up for this challenge. There are six of them. Um, Rachel Aronson to, to, to speak of. Not only is she a speaker today, she's also our, our lead evaluator uh, for the evaluation team. I'd like to recognize Dr. Steve Bordenero, who is the chief scientist at, uh, at Navy Lab Newport and the Northeast Tech Bridge. 
uh, Dr. Aaron Darton, who is the Chief Technical Officer at uh, Navy Lab Newport, or Keyport, excuse me, and will be a, a judge as well. Dr. Chris Verlinden, who is the Chief Technical Officer at Applied Ocean Sciences, who is an expert, uh, decades of, of experience in, in this field of marine mammals and marine mammal detection. And then finally, and, and Dr. Molly Greer, who is with PNNL Pacific Northwest Labs, an ocean engineer there uh, at, at the Sitka Lab. Uh, and finally, the last judge, the sixth judge, Josh Carter, not, the, not to mention, not, not to imply that he's the last judge, but um, he's the program director for Maritime Blue Accelerator and has uh, extensive knowledge in startups and these kind of prize challenges, and we're, we're glad to have him. Um, before I, before I enter, we start introducing the speakers, I'd like to make a note about asking questions. For those of you that are online, especially, you, you can ask the questions in chat and nod at me if that's correct. And then we will reread those questions in here in the room and the red questions will be repeated for everyone in the room and for the film. So I believe that's the process that we're going to be going through for, for questions. So with that, I won't, I won't stand up here much longer. I'll introduce um, the Northwest Tech Bridge Director, uh, Johannes Schomburg, Schomburg um, whose efforts were, uh, were primary in getting this challenge going. I, 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 he probably doesn't even want me to mention how many hours he spent talking to people trying to get this challenge going, so I won't. And, and so I'll just turn it over to Johannes to introduce our speakers. Thank you very much. Hi, good morning. Uh, again, my name is Johannes Schoberg. I'm uh, the Northwest Tech Bridge Director out of uh, Navy Lab at Keyport. And I uh, just want to thank everyone that's joined us today, both in person and virtually. Uh, thanks to Ryan Casey, the District Director for uh, Congressman uh, Rick Larson's office, and to Keith Swenson from the Washington State Department of Commerce as well for joining us. Um, I'm excited to announce today's speakers. Um, they'll be announcing the launch of the Autonomous Detection of Marine Mammals Prize Challenge. This effort has been a long time in coming, but we're excited to be able to showcase this partnership. Uh, we're collectively pursuing this challenge because autonomous vessels will be used both inland and in coastal waters in increasing numbers for commercial, scientific, and national security purposes. Together, we're working to ensure that these platforms will have the capability to safely detect and navigate around our resident marine mammal species. Further, this technology could also be used to support and augment the uh, watch standards on high-speed ferries that are uh, increasingly transiting our Puget Sound waters. So together, we're striving to leverage this incredible group of innovators from across Washington State and Rhode Island and across the nation to help solve some of our difficult technical challenges within the autonomous vehicle space. So we're excited to have everybody uh, here together to launch, that, uh, launch this event. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome our speakers. Uh, so our first speaker will be Captain John Moretti, a native of Portland, Oregon. He enlisted in the Navy in 1989. He was selected as a nuclear en enlisted commissioning program uh, and graduated with honors from Oregon State University in 1994 with a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. He was commissioned via the Officer Candidate School. He holds a Master's of Business Administration from San Diego State University and a Master of Arts in Strategic Studies and National Security from the Naval War College, where he was selected as Mahan Scholar and performed Chief Naval Operations Directed Research. Captain Reddy has served at sea aboard numerous submarine commands supporting strategic patrols, culminating in his command of the Henry M. Jackson, leading his crew in conducting four strategic deterrent patrols vital to our national security and earning the Henry M. Jackson the commander of the Pacific Fleet's Retention Excellence Award. Captain Reddy transitioned to the Navy's Acquisition Committee in 2016, and he served in key leadership positions across multiple organizations responsible for acquiring new technologies and submarines to support the Department of Navy. He's earned numerous personal and service awards, but most proud of the unit awards that he shares with his outstanding crews that he served alongside over his career. He's married to the former Jennifer Kaiser of Troutdale, Oregon, and has two children, Tanner and Talia, who both attended Oregon State University. Our second speaker will be Rachel Aronson. Rachel is the director of Quiet Sound, a Maritime Blue program. In her role, she administers a multi-stakeholder consortium to better understand and reduce the cumulative effects of acoustic and physical disturbances from large commercial vessels on the southern resident killer whales through the range across Washington State. 
Ms. Aronson studied bio biology and Hispanic studies at the University of Pennsylvania before moving to Washington State and earning her master's in marine environmental affairs. She has a long history in maritime policy, serving as both a Hirschman Marine Fe uh, Policy Fellow for Washington State Department of Ecology, as well as a director of Triangle Associates. The Department of Navy is fortunate to have Ms. Aronson, Quiet Sound, and Maritime Blue as partners in this autonomous detection of maritime uh, marine mammals prize challenge. Together, we're working to advance technologies to ensure the future commercial, scientific, and federal autonomous vehicles have the ability to operate safely in the waters of Puget Sound and coastal waters of Rhode Island while strengthening our economy and science. Thank you. Captain Ready? Thanks, Johannes. Good morning, and welcome to the kickoff event for the Whale Prize Challenge, focused on autonomous detection of marine mammals. I'd like to thank our great Tech Bridge team for facilitating today's event and all of our partners, including the Department of Navy Northwest Tech Bridge, Navy Lab Keyport, Northwest Tech Bridge, Navy Lab Newport, Impact Washington, the 401 Tech Bridge, Marine Blue, or Maritime Blue, and Quiet Sound. We're all partnering on a multi-stage challenge to detect, identify, and most importantly, protect protect marine mammals throughout the Puget Sound. A few years back, we initiated a collaborative effort between the Department of Navy, federal offices, Washington State and the private sector, along with the academic community to de develop a real-time tracking system that will output navigational quality data of the Southern resident killer whale population location in all weather and visibility conditions. Previous efforts have led to this challenge that will kickstart a collaborative relationship between stakeholders to integrate existing technologies or develop novel approaches to protect the health of the Puget Sound wildlife and preserve national security interests. The Department of Navy routinely trains, tests, and operates worldwide in an environmentally responsible manner. To achieve this, protective measures are in place and a marine mammal assessment protocol is used. Current measures rely on the use of trained lookouts and visual survey capabilities. While effective, these measures are manually intensive and require personnel that are trained on maritime species awareness. They therefore would not be applicable to unmanned surface vehicles and necessitate automated methods for detection and display. This well prized challenge is a recognition that will take a collaborative effort between the Department of Navy and the community to develop an automated real-time tracking system that will output navigational quality data of the ORCA pod location, including the hours of darkness and low visibility. As part of this challenge, the Secretary of Defense through its National Security Innovation Network has funded the initial phase of the prize challenge. This challenge will be a key factor in building relationships between all stakeholders that will enable the Department of Defense and the Navy to be able to meet their current and future mission needs in maintaining the security of the nation and the world's oceans. While this is the first time we work together to grow a technology capability. We're building on past collaborative successes as the 55 year restrictive easement along the Hood Canal totaling 2,500 acres of aquatic bedlands. This collaborative effort protects both the environment and our national security mission by limiting construction to protect the environment and was only possible by the uh, cooperative efforts between federal and state organizations and will continue to protect our ecology for years to come. This prize challenge focuses on that long history of partnership between the Navy Lab here at Keyport and Washington State, community representatives and local nonprofits. Further, the Well Prize Challenge will provide an effective means for autonomous vessels to achieve maritime uh, marine mammal protection and compliance for these endangered species. This is applicable for future deployments of autonomous fleets for both governmental and commercial vessels. 
Together, we can develop the needed technologies to protect our marine mammal and wildlife and the environment while at the same time meeting Navy missions to continue to support our national security interests. Thanks again for attending this event, and I'm excited to see the results of the challenge. It's my pleasure to turn, out, uh, to turn over to Ms. Rachel Aronson, the Director of Quiet Sound. Rachel. Uh, thank you so much, Captain Moretti and Navy Tech Bridge and all the partners who are here today to make this challenge happen. It's amazing to be standing here in front of a beautiful sunny day on Puget Sound, looking out at the waters where whales and large vessels share the water every day. Uh, as folks have said already, I'm the, the director of Washington Maritime Blue's Quiet Sound program. Uh, Maritime Blue's mission is to accelerate the sustainability and equity of the blue economy. And our Quiet Sound Orca Protection Program joins that mission by giving large vessels, such as cargo, cruise, ferry, uh, tankers, the technology and knowledge to reduce their impacts to whales. Uh, particularly the southern resident killer whales. They are the only endangered orcas uh, in the U.S. There are 73 of them remaining, although there are a few pregnant females, so we're hoping that that number goes up. Uh, those whales have lived in these waters since time immemorial, and uh, they face a number of impacts that Governor Inslee's southern resident orca recovery task force identified, from prey availability to toxins to vessels. So Quiet Sound is excited to lead the charge in the vessel protection uh, space. <laughs> We're excited to join this tech challenge because it represents our core value that our nation and our state's thriving maritime sector can coexist with these whales. Uh, we're excited that the Navy is contributing both their resources and their significant expertise to Quiet Sound and to this tech challenge uh, to help whales and vessels coexist. And we're excited to see the types of solutions that people bring to the table. Uh, we will be evaluating their responses for their suitability for whale sensing, for uh, increasing our ability to know where the whales are in Washington and uh, on the East Coast for the right whales. And the winner of the challenge will be invited to join the next wave of Maritime Blues Technology Accelerator Program uh, for small business. Uh, if any one partner was sufficient to recover the Southern resident killer whales, it would be done already, uh, but it's not. It's something that everyone in our state across the country uh, needs to come together and work towards. And we're very excited to see where this partnership leads and how it has great outcomes for the whales. Thank you. So what I'm going to do right now is take you through uh, basically the registration process um, for an incentive to register for the challenge, where you can find it, um, and uh, take any questions about uh, various aspects of the, the technical details of the challenge and, and how to participate. So let me share my screen. There are several ways to uh, get to the challenge in order to register and participate in it. One way is through challenge.gov, where all the government challenges are listed. If you scroll down, you'll find the challenge here. Simply click on that, and it will take you to the challenge page directly. Um, on this, you'll see right now that uh, we're not logged in or registered for the challenge. So we get to see an abstract and overview of the challenge, kind of the details, um, some of the, the overview of this, the general details, what you're gonna want to submit for the challenge. Uh, the prize uh, structure, we'll, we'll go into a little bit more detail here in just a moment on that. And also the eligibility. Another way to get to the challenge is you can simply go to inincentive.com to our challenge page. Scroll down. You can also find the challenge here along with other challenges. Click on that and you'll be taken to the challenge page here as well. The overview and abstract. And then for more details, we can go to the challenge page here. Now, <clears throat> before we actually go into uh, logging on and registering for this, 
um, a few of the aspects of this. This is a challenge that requires winners to um, assign a non-exclusive license to the IP that's represented in the solution that's presented in order to uh, receive the award. So this basically grants the stakeholders uh, the right to use the ideas that pre are presented, the software, the system that's uh, presented if it's chosen as a winner. Um, and But it also allows solvers to continue to develop and uh, utilize that IP for their own use and uh, monetize it in other markets as well. The challenge award is up to 75,500. Uh, that's the award total award pool for this challenge, uh, with no less than 50,000 being awarded to uh, the best submission and possible smaller awards being awarded to uh, to other submissions of note uh, or that uh, are deemed worthy by the judging panel. So if we want to go ahead and participate in this challenge, we'll want to go ahead and log on or register here. Um, I have an account already set up for this, but if you don't, what you'll want to do is go ahead and click to register as a solver. And it will bring up a registration page here. So they'll ask for an email, first name, last name, display name. It can be anything you want for the display name. Then we collect basic demographic information. Um, you do have to be 18 or older to participate in this challenge or to log on as a, or to register as a solver for the Unicet of site. Um, <clears throat> And uh, we do ask for your country. There are some excluded countries, but uh, most, most countries in the world are allowed to participate. Um, and then a, a bit more information just on types of challenges you might like the challenge. If you're participating as part of a company, you want to um, click this box here and then provide some basic information about the company as well. Um, that's <laughs> just to basically um, let us know who's participating and then if at the end there's an award made we know how to process that um, for an individual or a company. If we look uh, back at the challenge, as I said, once you've registered for an account on Innocent, if you don't have one already, you can come in and log into the, your account. And now that I'm logged in, I have a button here that says view challenge details. So we want to click that and this is an important legal agreement that pops up that you have to accept in order to participate in the challenge and to make a submission of your solution. So uh, please read this carefully. This lays out the rules. It talks about the um, uh, solution IP and transfer of the uh, uh, license, the non-exclusive license to the seeker, which are, are the stakeholders in this uh, in this case, in this challenge. Um, if you're not chosen for an award, if your solution is not chosen for award, of course, all rights revert back to you. So there's no assignment of any rights for um, solutions that are not awarded for this type of challenge. Um, it goes over the payments, uh, the timing of different payments and so forth for this confidentiality and general conditions. There are also some aspects um, specific to Navy challenges. So this is an addendum at the end of uh, what our, our challenge, standard challenge specific agreement is. So in terms of eligibility, um, first of all, let's go down to the bottom here. We'll agree and now if we go into the eligibility it specifies here um, basically the rules about who is eligible to uh, win an award for this uh, federal employees if if um, basically doing this sort of work is part of your regular work um, then you're typically not allowed to participate or uh, win an award in this um, this challenge is open to solvers worldwide. There's no restriction to U.S. Uh, citizenship or uh, residence. So this uh, 
<clears throat> we're hoping to get uh, solutions, you know, of course, both from the uh, Puget Sound area, but uh, other parts of the world that may have uh, similar issues and uh, have solutions that are going to be useful to us. So <clears throat> once you've registered for this, particular challenge, and you get to see the detailed description or requirements. Um, <clears throat> and uh, there's a great background here. It really talks about, you know, why this is so important, such an important challenge. Um, who is involved? I'm not going to go through this all. You can uh, read that for when you register for the challenge. Um, and then we get down to basically the purpose of the challenge here and what we're asking solvers to provide. So um, ultimately, the, the broad overview here is a data collection system that can integrate both a below water sensor and above water sensor um, in order to further the technology in uh, killer whale orca um, identification and, uh, and tracking, basically. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, a complete turnkey solution at this point. This is really the kickoff of a much larger project to perfect this sort of system um, and so we just want essentially to get the integration of these sensors into something that can timestamp all the sensor information and utilize it um, for feeding into uh, analysis programs um, in order to do the identification and tracking and, um, and other aspects of that. I'll let some of the other uh, stakeholders answer some of the more technical questions about this as well, if there are, if they come up. For project criteria, it describes what is uh, included in a solution when you make a submission to this. Um, a detailed description of your solution. Basically, you need to describe what it is, um, how the platform works, the sensors that are used. Um, source code and executables for any software developed for the challenge or a complete description of any commercial software utilized. Um, simulated or recorded data from each sensor individually that indicates its ability to detect um, marine mammals. And then uh, demonstration of a, the proposed system if, this, uh, if, if available. Uh, we'd love to see some demonstration of it using um, you know, uh, stand-ins or, you know, some other uh, modified or, or um, uh, stand-ins for, for essentially the marine mammals that will be detected. Um, we go in at the bottom, then we just restates eligibility and leave out the seeker here. Um, if you decide you're ready to submit a solution, you want to hit the add solution button. And then uh, you want to give the solution a name, provide a brief abstract, uh, conclusion if you want. So the abstract is required just to tell us quickly what, uh, what the solution proposes. Conclusion is optional. Um, the part of the submission, though, will be in the form of attachments. So uh, Word documents, PDF documents, uh, zipped source code. Um, so there are certain file types that we accept uh, natively. Um, if it's not listed here, then go ahead and zip it into an archive and submit that. So this is really where the heart of the submission is, is in the attachments. And you'll just want to uh, select a file to upload. Um, each file size is a maximum uh, one gigabyte uh, file size. So you may have to split some files up if you have a lot of uh, executable or source code there. But uh, once you've uploaded that, then you can either save it as a draft if you want to continue working on it or publish it. And then that will make it a formal submission. I can take a few questions, but I do want to highlight a couple points that, that uh, uh, Ralph made. One, um, when he was talking about data rights, it is quite different than an SBIR. Um, and if you listen closely, it's the, the getting data rights non-exclusively. We're encouraging a dual-use solution where you can still have data rights for any commercial use. You're just giving the data rights uh, for, the, for the Navy side. Um, the other thing you talked about, if multiple companies are teaming up, uh, and I think that's key with this 
this challenge because um, you know if you looked at the uh, if you paid attention to the Vineyard Win Challenge, uh, they had three winners, but none of them were multiple domains. I think there's a lot of solutions out there independent. So I think two companies and some duct tape, you might have something. Um, so uh, really, and that's what these events are all about. It's not just collaborating with the Navy, it's building an ecosystem, and I hate using that word because it's overused, at least in, in my circles, but it's, it's building that so you guys are working together, especially in this region. You know, we're a small state. Everyone knows each other. So, you know, these companies should be working together. Um, and then, you know, if you're a small company, you know, maybe you bring in a, a Raytheon as a site. Um, and speaking of that, I, I do want to thank some of my colleagues here from the Navy. Ra raise your hand, uh, Newark, Newark people. So th thank you guys uh, for coming. Uh, actually, Kristen Murphy was here who, who could answer all your questions about where um, – sail whiskers which is really interesting much more interesting than anything you can ask me about um uh, yeah, yep and, and uh um i forget your name i'm so sorry christina i knew that um <laughs> where it works in her branch uh so you can, you can talk to her about that as well as biofouling and um, I see her down at the waterfront making things muddy and cleaning them off. So it looks looks more fun than I just made it sound. Um, so anyway, uh, any any questions? What's the timeline on this So it opened up a few weeks ago, and um, when, when does it close? Thirty first. Okay. Yep. And as you see these prize challenges, just if you if you think about the rhythm of things, and and we're still kind of uh, you know, getting up to speed and trying to get with the band, but um, the OTAs, big picture wise, OTAs are dropping about twice twice a year. Uh, I think is that their rhythm. We want the prize challenges and the tech scouting to be a, a faster rhythm. Uh, a lot of prize challenges do a um, give two months to industry, um, and we we got to balance between one or two month. What I'd like to see as we really get rolling is a, a three month cycle where we have a month where, where someone in the Navy comes up with, hey, I have this problem, get a month to get the problem statement right, a month for industry, and a month to review. And as we, and if we're playing with any of those boundaries, it'd be the, the boundary between industry and review that you might give industry a little bit more time and give our reviewers a little less time. But we really want to get that, that fast pace going. So what, what does that mean for you guys? That, that means you probably not going to be starting from scratch if it's this type of challenge. Um, sometimes there's just ideation challenges where we're just saying, hey, we'll pay you for a good idea. Just write down your idea. Those, you know, um, uh, you can do pretty quickly. Um, but then if it's, a, a, I think it's called a, in the incentive terms, a reduction of practice, which means you're actually doing something. Uh, so, for example, the, the uh, price challenge for hand whales uh, was a reduction to practice. So the proposal was actually software that uh, the reviewers were actually be able to run the software, play with it. And what's nice is you're able to interact during the uh, review process. Uh, so, you know, one company had some good software, but something a little bit off, so they're able to say, hey, you know, you're, what, what's going on here? And they're able to do, a, do an update. So there's this, this interface with industry that you're allowed because you, you don't have to follow all the rules of the FAR. You still have to follow fair business rules and competition, but you're allowed a little bit more freedom. And in that example, you know, looking at the software that came out, if I thought about writing a FAR requirement for that, it, it, it would have been so much harder to get to where we ended up with pretty quickly. Um, so... Uh, so I think it's a really interesting way to to uh, work with industry. Yep. Uh, that that's a full proposal, but if you look at the proposal requirements, it's it's uh, well, and it's not even a, a it's more than a proposal. So if you have a a system that. Uh, maybe needs a little modification. Uh, you could provide uh, some demo results. Uh, so it's it's different than a uh, you know what you'd be looking at for a uh, a big big FAR proposal. So so take a, take a look. Um, I will say with the timeline in, in this event in particular, um, we tried to do a lot of outreach when the uh, when the proposal stage opened. So uh, we had it go out a little while after that. We had our virtual event, which you just 
resaw, and then we had this event. We were hoping that that um, companies would come with some more Q and A, but had some I ideas. So we we're hoping people weren't hitting ground zero uh, right now. So if this is the first you're hearing about it, uh, that that's a failure on our part to get get the word out. Okay, I'm going to hand it back over to to Linda. Great. So thank you. Um, like I had mentioned earlier, we'll, you will receive the full recording from the Washington um, brief, including the Q&A, as well as the recording from, from this session as well. Um, with regards to Kelly Higgins and the Innocentive platform, you can submit uh, questions to him as well. That will come back out to the, to the team um, and, and get those questions answered if there's anything else that, that comes to mind following either of these sessions. Um, we encourage you to stick around and, and and uh, network and also engage with the folks that are here from Newick um, and ask maybe your questions on one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes in these sessions, we know people don't like to talk about certain capabilities or technologies or things like that. So that's better off in a in a, in a one on one situation. And as always, the um, 401 Tech Bridge team and Northeast Tech Bridge team will be here um, providing any any tours or trying to answer any questions about the lab and the facility space. So um, so feel free to stick around. Um, we're we're here to, to you know to help and support and answer any questions that you have. And again, thank you all for coming.